now have the Pledge of Allegiance by Washington Avenue Elementary School. For the pledge, we have from Washington Avenue, Jeremiah Sombrano, our president, Bryson Reyna, our secretary, Aidan Cobos, representative, Christy Ruiz, our treasurer, Ryder Dean, representative, Miley Prudencio, representative, <coughs> Haley Seinkamp, representative, Maya Olivas, representative, Brianna Calkins, representative. Please join us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I salute the flag of the state of New Mexico, the Zia symbol of perfect friendships among united cultures. I just want to say it's an honor to be here, to be with some mentors I've had, and uh, their first time at this meeting. I really am happy to be here. Thank you so much for letting us do this. If you would remain standing for our moment of appreciation from Shelley Bruns. Dr. McElroy, President Getty, and esteemed members of the school board, I am in awe of and sincerely humbled by the men and the women of the Roswell Independent School District Special Services Department that willingly choose to serve students with special needs in varying capacities like educational assistants, special education teachers, preschool teachers, preschool education associates, data information specialist, administrative assistants, bookkeeper, Medicaid specialist, data records clerk, gifted and talented teachers, gifted and talented coordinator, speech language pathologist, social workers, behavior intervention specialist, occupational therapist, certified occupational therapy assistants, physical therapists, physical <coughs> therapy assistants, nurses, educational diagnosticians, school psychologist, itinerant teacher for the deaf and hearing impaired, sign language interpreters, sign language immersion educational assistants, deaf and hard of hearing educational associates, brailing and visual educational associates, itinerant teacher for the visually impaired, IEP specialist, transition specialist, transition assistant, and community connections with adult providers or CCAP job coaches. I am truly thankful for each and every one of them and all that they do in schools to work with students at varying grade and functional levels between the ages of 3 and 21 at all sites, collaboratively with a multitude of school teams to support disabilities so that students see their possibilities and they learn ways to utilize their strengths to overcome their weaknesses. These staff members have willingly chosen to build a deep and meaningful foundation of love, respect, celebration of differentiation for academic, functional, and transitional success with students that will carry them far into the future to someday determine how they would lead and to serve in their communities. Please let's take a moment to appreciate the staff.
Thank you. You may Thank be you. seated. All right. Are there any modifications to the agenda? Mr. Getty, there are no modifications to the agenda. May I have a motion to approve? So moved. I have a motion made by Ms. Kirk. May I have a second? Second. I have a second made by Ms. Morales. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The ayes have it and the motion is carried. We will now have inquiries and general comments. Ms. Whitcamp, has anyone requested to speak? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. What's that? Our first one? Well, let me go through the thing here. Oh, no. that's right. I got to read this. Yep. Please listen and speak with respect. No uncivil conduct will be permitted. Please do not discuss any specific student who is not your own. Please do not discuss confidential personnel matters, including those of a per disciplinary nature regarding any RISD employee. This should be discussed with the superintendent or the employee's supervisor. Please self-monitor and observe the three-minute time limit. You may be given a 30-second warning when your time is almost up. If needed to accommodate a large number of speakers and maintain a reasonable meeting schedule, the time limit for all speakers may be shortened. No sharing of time is permitted. Public commentary and dialogue is only guaranteed during the public forum, not throughout the meeting. Please search for answers on common ground. You may speak on any topic, whether it is on the agenda or not. Your input will be taken into consideration. Please be advised that the board may discuss your issue during the meeting, but by law, the board cannot take action on items that are not on the agenda. For the safety of others, for the safety of yourself and others, signs and placards are not permitted in the boardroom. However, you are invited to express your concerns during public forum or submit your concerns to the board in writing. Our first speaker is Randy Likens. Good evening. Superintendent McElroy, President Gaddy, members of the board, congratulations on the new members. Um, my name is Randy Likens, and I'm a gifted educator and case manager for almost between 70 and 80 kids at Roswell High. And my question is here, in the comments that I would like to make, is I'm going to have a statement here and then I'll explain. My, my concern is not with the gifted kids nor the high achievers because they will be successful no matter what. Over the five years that I've been here, I've heard many educators and I've heard many different superintendents that are not superintendents but administrators that have made this statement my question to you is i've been very blessed at roswell high i bleed roswell high i graduated from roswell high in 1969 so i've been there a while <laughs> and the, the point that i'm talking about is that in the talk in the pathway that we're doing at roswell high and talking about pathway education I noticed in the redesign committee that there was no pathway for gifted or high achievers. In bringing that to Mr. Warner's uh, attention, to Dr. Bond's attention, to Godswell's attention, they have asked me to look for a pathway to try to help that, that we can make that in here. And I, and I am doing that. <clears throat> the problem is that we look at is that pathways cost money, don't they? So my question is this to each and every one of you is that where do you get the money for the gifted kids? The answer is the gifted kids give you the money. Just by their identification last year in 2018 and 19, Roswell District got $4,200 per student just for the gifted kids at the high school level. And it varies all the way down. Mr. V. Hill did not allow me to, I, didn't, I won't say allow me, I did, he didn't, wasn't able to return my call uh, to allow me what the new money is for this year. But at Roswell High, the, since I've been there, we've averaged between three and four hundred, and sometimes close to five hundred thousand dollars each year. And none of that money is being used for gifted education. The, the idea was is that when we go back and look at the reason for this money to be here, 
as Shelley said a while ago, and all the people seconds. that are involved in it. I'm sorry. 30 30 seconds. Seconds. That money has to be here for somewhere. And my ask on this thing is that we reevaluate that. That money is brought here by the gifted kids and should be used at least in part for them, especially to develop these pathways. And I would certainly appreciate the, the, the consideration for that because it's extremely important. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to have to move that down. <laughs> Good evening. Superintendent McElroy, President Getty, esteemed members of the school board, again, welcome to those of you who this is your first meeting. I am here tonight um, in support of Mr. Lykins' comments, but also in support of the Gifted Mentorship Program. Gifted Mentorship Program has been in our district for 38 years. Last semester was only the second time in that history that we did not hold, that I understand, a gifted mentorship reception. Um, I don't know what's happened to the gifted mentorship program or what the next path will be provided. However, that program <coughs> has been a critical part of our district for 38 years. I would like, hopefully, for you to look into that and to see what is going to be done for those students. It is a gifted mentorship program. I understand through the pathways that have been developed, there are mentorship opportunities for other students which I think are fabulous and great. We also have all, in the past, included other students not identified in the gifted mentorship program. However, the mentorship program only existed at Russell Hyatt, to my knowledge, in the last few years. Um, and that was, it was at Goddard, I'm sorry, not at, not at Russell Hyatt, at Goddard High School. I have been in the district 21 years. The majority of my time has been spent in high school gifted education. Currently, I'm at Valley View Elementary School in the gifted, working with gifted students there. This is about providing a continuum of services based upon whatever you decide that to be. We know that there's funding. We know that, that legally it's put into the general operations fund. I would like to see the continuum of services that we've had in our district for several years extended to those students who are currently part of that identified gifted <coughs> population. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Orlando Padilla. Good evening all, uh, school board members, superintendent uh, and staff, central staff. Uh, my name is Orlando Padilla and uh, first of all I wanted to thank you all for your time and your work that you put in uh, for our children uh, is, is been brought to our attention, our attention, Coalition for Equity and Physical Responsibility. It concerns the changes that are being made at the Alternative School University High. Changes being made suggest it to be a charter school instead of an alternative school. The requirements that have been imposed and of conferences with parents and students that are being denied access makes it a charter school. This could be a violation of a free and public education act. The coalition has received concerns regarding students being denied enrollment during this last month. Your concern is about requirements or data instead of helping kids, which goes against what educators believe Kids first. Put in your block schedule first and students second and creating a February the 7th cutoff date and not taking a risk students in March, April, and May is a violation of the Yazi Martinez lawsuit. The district needs to act wisely and, and avoid any further lawsuits. Thank you for your time. Good evening, uh, Superintendent, Mr. Getty, uh, school board members, congratulations again. Uh, I'm here because I'm really concerned about 
uh, the census. My name is Bobby Villegas. I live at 602 Estrellita. That's so all. I'm really concerned about the census and the fact that the school system is working with the school census. And uh, their, the program that, I, that I've had is right is that the, the census, the school system are going to be working with our elementary schools with coloring books. I'm also going to have a program at, at Roswell High and have a band and have music there to uh, get the students to, to convince them to have their parents, particularly the undocumented, the green card holders and the DACA kids to fill out the forms. However, the concern is that the census, if President Trump requests the information from the census to give it to ICE, they will have to do that. And I know the census is saying that it is protected. It is only, the, 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 there's a $250,000 fine if a worker divulges information from the census, but that's for the workers, not for any government entity. So as we move into our school system we, and we find out what they're doing with the census and the schools, we're going to register a lot of those people that will be at risk, those being undocumented, green card holders, and DACA. So I'll give you this example. In 1940, when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, the Census Bureau secretly provided the information to the other government entities, and all Americans with Japanese ancestry were arrested. The mothers and dads and kids were put in cages, kind of like our, our administration has done in in the border. Uh, in 1988, President Reagan apologized to the Japanese uh, for the atrocities that he says was the, the worst atrocity ever made against civil rights. Uh, and you can look this up under the secret use of, of Census Info Help sent Japanese Americans to internment camp. Now, in 1988, then, when President Reagan apologized to the Japanese Americans, they also gave him $20,000, those families they could find. Because not only did they arrest them and put them in cages, they confiscated all their properties. And, and this was done secretly. In, in 2000, when the towers were destroyed, the Census Bureau again, secretly, provided Homeland Security the information they had so that the areas that had a predominant population of Arab Americans would be kept under surveillance. This is done by the Census, and this is not too long ago. Now, so uh, if, if President Trump asks that, it will, it will cause our, our, our kids and parents to be in trouble. All I'm asking is that if you're going to support the census, and I support the census as an American citizen, we should give those parents and their kids the other side. We should tell them these stories and tell them that if they tell their parents to fill out the census forms, they can be deported. If Trump gets it, they will all be deported. I just feel we should give them, uh, tell them both sides of the story and let, let the parents decide if they want to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, uh, President Getty, board members, Superintendent McElroy, and staff. First, I want to, to uh, again congratulate the two new board members, and I know that they're going to do a great job uh, because it is for the kids. I, I stand before you as a concerned citizen. I am concerned about the changes that I have heard that will take effect at University High. I apologize ahead of time if my statements are not accurate. However, they are based on facts as I understand them. From what I understand, originally University High was set up as an alternative setting for kids that for whatever reason were not able to function in the standard high school setting. It was supposed to be a safety net and a resource to provide opportunities for students to be able to succeed in achieving an education and hopefully carry that success into their future plans. I understand the changes at, at University High will prohibit a student to attend University High unless the student follows the process of making an application, go through an interview process, and a screening process. This, in my opinion, shatters the purpose of why it was set up in the first place. RISD is a public education institution which should welcome students with open arms. Not to mention, as you well know, funding for the district is determined on a number of factors, which one 
is the number of students it serves. By putting this kind of restrictions, one can argue the school district has implemented a process similar to what uh, charter schools use, uses, which eliminates the theory of free education. This process has the potential of whoever makes a decision to accept a student or not to discriminate against the student or students for one reason or another. This process can potentially be used to weed out students that in the evaluator's opinion does not deserve an opportunity. So it allows the evaluator or evaluators to become judge and jury and have a tremendous negative impact in a student's future. Everyone deserves a free education. For the most part, these students, I would argue, are at-risk students. I can't understand why one would want to put a student that may be having problems of one nature or, or another seconds. through this type of process. This can also be interpreted as a violation of the Yazi Martinez uh, settlement. So in my opinion, I believe staff, in particular the superintendent, should discuss these types of issues with the board before moving forward with the implementation. I hope and urge the board to consider overturning this process because that would be the right thing to do. Our kids deserve it. Thank you. Thank you. Dolores Frescas. I'm not going to have to lower it. My voice carries up. Good evening, school board members, superintendent. I am simply here because I wanted to congratulate the two new school board members, Hilda Sanchez and Hope Morales. And I hope that along with the other school board members, they will see the needs and the necessities that are here in Roswell to educate all our children. I taught at Roswell High School for 40 years. I taught for the junior college out there. I worked for Portales, supervising school teachers. And I know what education needs. I started at Roswell High School back in 1968-69 when they had 2,200 students. 90% of the student body was Anglo-Saxon. I left first time in the year 2000, whenever my husband became superintendent because I didn't want to work for him. No. <laughs> my father was ill and my mother needed help. <laughs> uh, he was probably one of the best superintendents Roswell has ever had because he saw the change. He had worked as dean of uh, instruction of a curriculum or was something, dean of students out at the campus. And then he started the one in Albuquerque. However, I have seen Roswell High since 1968 all the way through about 2014, okay, 40 years of it. I hope that you continue to see the change. The population at Roswell High changed in number and it changed in ethnic background. You must deal with ethnic background. I tried very hard to get education in English and in Spanish throughout the city, but it didn't work. I was born and raised in Santa Fe. When I first came to Roswell, I could go to Sears and find a Hispanic person because they looked like me. And I'd speak Spanish, and they could, wouldn't speak Spanish back to me. They were not allowed. The more languages you know, the more people you get to know and love and want to help. Congratulations, Senora Sanchez, Senora Morales, Edwards. I've known you for a long time. He used to commute with my husband from Las Vegas at points. But anyway, I knew him from the Boys Club. Please, look at what we have. Better what you can. OK? Thank you. That's it. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, let's move on to the approval of the minutes. So uh, Mr. Getty, members of the board, there is an error on the minutes in the draft of the minutes. Um, there is an executive session noted in the minutes from last meeting. We did not have an executive session uh, at the last meeting. So that entire 
section of the minutes needs to be struck. Um, with that modification, I would recommend approval of the uh, minutes as amended of the regular board meeting of December 10th to, uh, tw that would be 2019. Yeah. Do I have a motion to approve as? Amended. amended. As amended. So moved. Okay. I have a motion made by Ms. Kirk. Do I have a second? I second. Second by Ms. Sanchez. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. The ayes have it and the motion is carried. We now have the consent agenda. I recommend approval of the consent agenda, which includes approval of the December bills, authorization of the January bills, and approval of the January bars. Is there any discussion? If not, may I have a motion to approve? So moved. I have a motion made by Ms. Kirk. May I have a second? A second. A second made by Ms. Morales. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The ayes have it and the motion is carried. Next we have our action items. First we have the approval of out-of-state travel for robotics tournament. And there are better presenters than I for oh. this particular <laughs> and here um, they come. endeavor. <laughs> Microphone. Hello, on? Dr. McElroy, President, and the rest, and the board members. <laughs> I'm Joanne Alvarez, and we are Hangar 84, Team 7271. We are a robotics team with Early College and Roswell High School. Scoot up a little closer. The there you go. <laughs> this will be our third year competing with over 30 students participating. We are currently using the eye center at ENMUR, which allows us to use a 3D printer, laser engraver, a wood shop, a metal shop, vinyl printers, a lot for us to use. Last year we went to competition with your, with your permission and we're here today to request permission to travel. Hello, my name is Jocelyn, and on behalf of our robotics team, we would like to give a thanks to Dr. McElroy for helping us find sponsors last year. Without her help, we would not have been able to attend state competition in Austin, Texas. We would also like to give a thanks to Jennifer Cole for helping us with registration funds this year. We are very grateful for their support. I am PH from Hangar Ready for Robotics, and I'm here to explain what the first competitions are. So firstly, get the joke, um, <laughs> first stands for, for inspiration and recognition of science and technology, and they provide opportunities to our students to um, further their education by uh, providing scholarships and just bringing them into many different career areas like business, technology, uh, science, and engineering. And FIRST also poses competitions for these students to practice these career skills in action. Hang Ready 4 will be participating in this year's FIRST Robotics competition. And by doing this, they will be challenged to work as a team, generate funds, and develop a team brand, as well as produce and program a large-scale robot, uh, robot that will be controlled in these competitions, working with and against other student teams. All in all, these competitions are an incredible resource to our students to sharpen their leadership and engineering skills. Yes, please. <laughs> all right. Hello, everybody. My name is Dimitri Azi, and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the this year's first robotics competition. So. An in Infinite Recharge, that's a game name, uh, teams are tasked with creating a robot that can not only store power cells, which is this, but shoot them into a specified target zone. So during the competition, teams of three race for two minutes, and two and a half minutes, and try to score as many points as possible and win the <coughs> round. So the ranking system, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but how it works is the more rounds you win, in the competition, the higher chance you have of getting into district championships 
and nationals. Imagine Razo being a nationals. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. Hello, my name is Cole Borner. I'm going to be talking about the impact of our program. The students who participate in our robotics program have benefited greatly from the experience because we provide them an opportunity to gain practical experience in areas that they otherwise wouldn't be able to do, like graphic design and mechanical engineering, electrical engineering. We also give them exposure to some vital business skills as well as vital leadership skills. That's a big one. We also strive to impact New Mexico and Roswell's community as a whole. For example, we've used our robot in various other events throughout Roswell in the past year or two. And participating in the program gives those involved a sense of pride and spirit. Because when we go there, we're proud to be able to say that we're the robotics team from Roswell, New Mexico. And when we meet with the other teams from New Mexico, it's just a huge fest of New Mexican spirit. <laughs> Hello, my name is Morgan Stites. I am with Hangar 84 Robotics, and we are a part of the Texas District. In lieu of that, we have to travel out of state to our competitions. So we are here tonight to ask for permission to travel to Amarillo on March 12th and to El Paso on March 27th. We would appreciate it tremendously. Thank you for your time this evening. Good job, guys. Thank you. All right, well, do we have any questions or discussion among the board? If there is not, may I have a motion to approve? Well, I have oh. a question, though. Well. So, sorry. So, w when are y'all traveling? What is the date of your March travel? 12th. March 12th. March 12th. And March 27th. March 12th and March 27th. How did I miss that? The 12th and the 27th. And if you need to ask some more questions, feel free. So tell us about your competition and what you plan on doing with that information that you gain from going to this competition. Well, a big part of going to the competition is preparing for the competition next year in a way. Because first year, we made a robot and we did well. But second year, we did so much better because we were able to use our robot in the field. And we were also able to look at other teams' robots. We were able to improve. We were able to start the engineering design process over again and improve on what we built and use the experience that we gained in order to succeed. <coughs> and hopefully recruit other members? <laughs> oh, yes. It's a whole team. It's open, it's open, it's open to every school, Goddard, Roswell High, University. It's mostly um, every college. OK. So we should see the other schools hitting us up for money. <laughs> also, also freshmen, they uh, we have a few freshmen here, and uh, they come into the program. I have a question. Thank you. Freshmen? Oh, nice. Sophomores? Juniors? And no seniors? Oh. Who are the sponsors for your team? I, I'd like to know who are the teachers involved that are going to be travel, traveling with you. Ms. Batista, okay. Ms. Huckabee, Mr. Kirk, and Walter Lowe. Walter Lowe is a former education teacher from Berendo Middle School, I believe, and, but he's come back and helped us uh, okay. each year. We also have several other members from the community that randomly step in, or there's former robotics teachers from Eunice that have come down on a weekend and helped us. There's another team from El Gordo who mentor, uh, assist the mentors. In addition, they typically come on Saturdays, help the team. They also bring their teams to help teach our guys uh, how to do, whether it be wiring, programming, whatever, and we'll help with everything. So while there's set mentors here, okay. there's also a broad array Wonderful. of mentors that we've Skyped in from California, Indiana, sure. across the board. So you're still involved with the robotics team? Yes, ma'am. Where do you find the tongue? I was going to ask that. Ma'am, I don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs>
Obviously. <laughs> Miss Batista, do you feel confident that the funds will be raised in time? With these guys, yeah. Uh, so with these guys, and then truly, I uh, thanks. Uh, we had to have a major push last year to earn 13 grand just for we qualified for what would have been the state championship. They were ranked 26th of, I believe, 100 and 198 teams across Texas and New Mexico. Um, the kids have raised about nine grand of that. We only had a few days left. Uh, Dr. McElroy was keeping up on that on the daily. And when she found out we needed about three grand more in three days, she came through with it uh, by asking other people. And so these kids are great. They'll hit the streets and be able to ask as many businesses as they can. Um, they bring in money from Montana, California, Florida, anywhere that they have family or friends. So with them behind the wheel, yes, I believe so. And then in addition to support from leadership, yes. Very cool. So how much are you asking for? They're not asking uh, for any right now. Oh, okay. Well, they just, just want permission to travel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, permission. Every competition is about four grand. And we're hoping to go to the district, which is in San Antonio. And that's when you'll be a bit more. But okay. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. And four grand includes all travel costs, uh, et cetera. Our registration fees have already been covered. Thanks again to Jen Cole, who helped uh, find some funds for us there. Um, but yeah, so the kids will raise about four grand for each trip, trip including buses, food, hotel, et cetera. Nice. Thank All you, right. Ms. Batista, for yeah. your dedication. They may do it. All right. Obviously. Thank yeah. you. Any other discussion? Okay, well then, do I have a motion to approve so moved. their travel? So I have a motion by Ms. Morales. Do I have a second? Second. I second. Oh, okay, second made by Mr. Edwards. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The ayes have it, and the motion is carried. Now we have approval of, you guys Thanks, can go guys. sit down. Thank you Appreciate so much. You. Sorry, we just stand there. Congratulations. Keep up the great work. Thank, Thank you. Awesome. You'll do great. Thank you. 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 All right. Next, we have the GHS out of state travel to Texas Tech Health Science Center. And Mr. Luck is here to discuss this field trip. Hi, good evening, President Getty, uh, Dr. McElroy. Uh, this is a trip that the uh, Goddard High School Anatomy Department and just students in general have been taking for the last uh, few years. I believe you have a, a little a brief synopsis in your board packet that kind of describes what it is. Uh, pretty much in plain English, we're going to get over there about 8 o'clock Texas time, so we're going to get our kids up really early. Uh, there is just about standing room only to, to get on this thing. We take generally about 53 kids because that's what our charter bus that we get will take. Uh, we use our funds for this. The kids kind of help raise a little bit of money. Uh, we do pitch in a little bit of travel. Uh, we get them over to Texas Tech. Uh, the tentative date right now, I believe, is March 5th, although this year they are uh, proposing a couple different dates. Uh, but the one that Ms. White is requesting for right now is, is for March 5th. Um, phenomenal opportunity. Uh, like I said, they're going to they're gonna tour the facility. They're actually going to get into the Gross Human Anatomy Lab, have an opportunity to ask questions. Um, and for positive and negative, it's, it, it has been a life-changing event for most of the kids that have been on this. And we've had several students that have uh, made decisions to continue forward and, and even a few that have decided maybe not so much. Uh, but we are, we're asking for your permission due to it being an out-of-state venture uh, for us to be able to get to go. Okay. And I do recommend approval of this travel request. Um, on March 5th for Goddard High School. Any questions or discussion? So all of the kids that, that attend this trip, they're all in the anatomy program? The majority of them, yes. They, uh, they have to sign up. Uh, it, like I said, there, there generally is a waiting list to get to go on this trip. 
and it, it is promoted generally out of the anatomy class it's, itself, um, but uh, it's not limited to just that. And how many staff members are going? We'll generally send at least three staff members with this. That's about an appropriate number. We get the group up when we get over to Texas Tech, and we try to send somebody with as many of the kids as we can. It's usually Miss White, uh, for sure, and then at least two other volunteers that go. And as of right now, we don't know who exactly those will be. At least one chaperone is a male, and then we generally try to send usually our trainer to go with uh, to kind of help answer some questions as far as um, what did they have to do whenever they were in that particular class. It, it seems to serve our purposes fairly well. Anything else? Well, I like the idea of the schedule, and I see, see right here it says gross anatomy orientation. Gross anatomy tour. Interesting. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I don't know if that's an adjective or if it's just a, a proper noun. noun. Just <laughs> Worthwhile. I'll, I'll say that. It's, it's, it's Go into your board for very good. Anything else? All right. With that, do I have a motion to approve this out of state travel? So moved. I have a motion made by Ms. Kirk. Do I have a second? Second. Second made by Ms. Sanchez. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The ayes have it and the motion is carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next we have the Brendel Middle School donation from KISS Institute for Practical Robotics. Yes, and I don't know if that's an acronym for anything or not, but I um, <laughs> because I don't have it spelled out for me, maybe Ms. Hillman knows, but um, I do recommend approval of the Brindle Middle School um, $6,354 donation from the KISS Institute for Practical Robotics. That total entails six robotics kits valued at $500 each and six Dell Chromebooks valued at $559 each. Okay, I really want to know what that means. KISS. The KISS Institute. <laughs> and how do you get in there? <laughs> I don't think I have kisses. <laughs> I have lots of kisses, sorry. <laughs> but I don't know their... Yeah, no, it's. I don't have their acronym, sorry. I just know oh, what they're doing. Man. I'm going to look it up on Google. Yeah. Everybody Google. Not today. Oh, okay, good. Well, not right now, anyway. Kiss Institute for Practical Robotics. Okay. Well, if we don't have that, then I'm going to have to. No, I'm just kidding. Deny uh, <laughs> because you can't know be kissed. is that they are a nonprofit STEM based education organization, and they recently received funds from Dell Computers Legacy of Good Youth Learning. And so that's what this fund, that's what's funding this donation yeah. uh, to Brenda Middle School. Okay. okay. Well, does anybody have any other questions other than that? So my only question, Ms. Hillman, it's a wonderful opportunity. This is exciting. Mm -hmm. How do we spread this to other schools within the district? How did you get connected with KISS? I think I have a lot of teachers who spend all their time looking for how we can get opportunities like this, but we do typically share with our compadres when we come across something that they can apply for also. So this one had a time limit on it. There were only four awarded in, the, in New Mexico. She caught on to it kind of at the end of the opportunity, and then we were one of the four awarded in New Mexico. But we try to share them with everyone else as we get things. Cool. Anything else? Okay, may I have a motion to approve? So moved. I have a motion made by Ms. Morales. Do I have a second? A second. A second made by Mr. Edwards. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The ayes have it and the motion carried. Thank you all. I'll look for kiss and email you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to that, Ms. Hillman. Uh, next, we have an RFP recommendation, Abestus Abatement Services. So I do recommend approval of RFP number 20-03, the Asbestos Abatement Services. And Mr. Tweet is here to stand for questions. Right. 
<laughs> and that's why you're here, right? <laughs> Sorry. I am sorry. What schools? What schools? Uh, President Getty, Dr. McElroy, uh, members of the board. Um, if you do have any questions, um, I, I'm happy to try and answer them for you. Um, it is time for us to uh, look for another vendor to perform these oh, services okay. for us. Uh, we mm -hmm. did an RFP for it. We had three vendors that responded. Um, I think you have some summary information mm -hmm. in your notes. Um, and going through the evaluation process, uh, we just felt uh, that the vendor we're recommending was the best to perform the duties for us. Okay. Do we, what facilities do we have on the list to be abated? Honestly, I, I am not sure of okay. what any immediate projects that we have on, but I th um, just as some come up, we have somebody in our pocket to, okay. to do them. I know they were scored on proximity. Is the top vendor local? No, uh, we didn't have any local vendors. Um, I think the closest we did have was Lovington. Okay. Um, the, the vendor that we're recommending is out of um, Albuquerque. Um, the previous vendor that we had, and we used them for about six years, was also out of Albuquerque. And um, surprisingly, the, the vendor that we're choosing uh, had the quickest uh, response time of all the vendors who submitted. So there's no current sites that are going to be abated, right? Not, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, and these are, these are really um, not any major projects, to my understanding, but just is maybe some um, security camera installations happen at school or something, or at some of the older schools, some areas get not invaded, but, but work done in some of the older corridors or areas where there could be asbestos in the ceiling or something. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anything else? All right, do I have a motion to approve this RFP? So moved. I have a motion made by Ms. Kirk. Do I have a second? Second. second. Second made by Ms. Morales. I think she was first. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The ayes have it, and the motion is carried. <coughs> oh, next we have the policy for board organizational meeting. First reading. First reading. And so this is the first reading of policy um, B-0900 board organizational meeting. This policy specifically addresses the change in the election laws. Um, previously when boards were elected in November, it, um, the policy was to elect or, or reorganize in January. Well now with the elect, sorry, when they were in February, it was in March. Now that they're in November, it's to, to be done in January. And so this, that, that's the only change is the month from March to January. And so um, I do recommend approval of the policy recommendation. And this is the first reading. It is so. the first reading. So we don't even have to really yeah. vote on this. We it's don't just the first reading. One. So, all right. <coughs> Reports. So, so we're good with, with that, no, no yeah, changes no, or discussion? Well, if, if there is discussion, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't ask. Good job. Thank you. All right. Okay. okay. Um, so in reports, um, you've been given a copy of the personnel reports and um, stand for any questions. Dr. McElroy, I do have a couple of questions related to personnel. Um, if you can answer, or maybe Mr. Bird. Um, does the district conduct a survey or an exit interview to collect data as to why teachers are leaving? Are we gathering that information? Yes, ma'am. Okay. How are we using the data? Like, are we getting good data from it that we can actually use to try to improve? So the, it's, it's a relatively new process. Um, <clears throat> And I'll give a shout out to Maria Trujillo, who came up and we collaborated and put it together. It's on SurveyMonkey. So it's, it's a fairly new process that we've started using. Um, and so we have a little bit of data to that, but not a significant amount as to, you know, what, what I'd like to see. I think by the end of the, the, the actual school year, May, I think we would have enough data gathered that will give us a little bit better idea I mean because you know we can take you know the information that we have now but but we are using one yes awesome. it's exciting to hear maybe in May we can look at some of the data when we've collected enough and I apologize I missed that so that's for the exit 
interview? Yes. So what we, it's it's done on SurveyMonkey. So what are we going to do with that data once we collect it? Once we collect it, we need to then look at how we're, what are some of the things that we're not doing to support teachers, EAs, um, custodial maintenance staff. I mean, just to, you know, what processes are we not doing as a district as a whole that we can improve to make it to where people want to stay with us? Okay. We might be able to use it to help us in the budget planning or something to prioritize the needs once we have the data to yes. see why folks are leaving. Um, and thank you. I see that we have some job fairs coming up. Besides the job fairs, I know some of the districts try to look enticing to new teachers. Like Carlsbad, we know they have the higher salary. Lake Arthur has early student release on Friday. Clovis gives a recruitment bonus for exemplary teachers. What Do we have something in Roswell that we say, like surrounding difference have these different incentives. In Roswell, what can we offer to tell teachers to come here? Do we have that? Are we advertising anything specific? So we have a relocation bonus is at this point. I know there's been questions brought up prior about a signing bonus per se and i know mr cole has spoken about that with the anti-donation clause one of the things that we've looked at like with clovis there are some stipulations to that as far as extra training and and so they're actually it's not just hey sign on the dotted line we're going to give you this money right. go There's on about your way but you know those are definitely things that you know we can look at i mean you know i'm open to whatever it is you know to 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 make it to where teachers want to come and work for us i mean you know if we could all pay them you know the 40 million dollars a year like you see the nfl quarterbacks get i'd love to do that and so anything that we can do to think outside the box i'm all for there is, um, I was informed today that the Legislative Finance Committee actually has kind of a buried little item in their um, proposed budget for sign-on bonuses. I will tell you, I heard that from the union, and they're not happy. Um, because what it does is it pits teacher against teacher. Um, you know, we used to have the hard-to-staff stipends for um math and science teachers, mm -hmm. bilingual special education, and, and it did cause some concern. I don't know if it did here in Roswell, because I, I wasn't here then, but um, across the state, it, it um, caused a lot of concerns, um, because what if I'm an elementary teacher? Why don't I get a stipend? What if I'm an English teacher? You know, does that, de it, so it kind of pit teacher against teacher. And so, um, so I will just tell you that that it, there is that little pot of money in the Legislative Finance Committee's um, proposed budget for this legislative session, but I will tell you that the unions will fight it uh, pretty handily. I would still like us to be able to talk about different options. In Roswell, Absolutely. we have a need for math teachers. Like, our students are hurting at different schools, different levels. We have to think and talk about it. We have great partners within the community. So at least if we start thinking what's available, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't. But we have to do more. And then looking at, um, we, our numbers are great in some schools, not so great in other schools. But when we talk about uh, substitute teachers, can you tell me what type of training are we doing? Like, how are we making sure that they're actually in the classroom teaching our students and being successful because we have to depend on substitutes when we don't have teachers? So what happens a lot of times if we have a long-term sub, somebody who's going to take over a classroom, their training becomes a little more, I don't wanna say intensive, but basically, um, you know, our principals do a great job of getting together um, our team leader teachers on those um, grade levels, be it, or even content areas. So we're providing that support to those folks that if they take a long-term position during the school year, that they're getting that support at the school, at the school level. And, you know, that's something that our principals, like I said, have done a great job with because they they want the best for our kids, too. And so they're going out. Of, I mean, they're going above and beyond. And we have other teachers that are going above and beyond to try to ensure that those substitutes are ready to try to provide with their limited experience the best, you know, opportunity for those kids in those classrooms. 
do we kind of measure the effectiveness of substitutes to know if a sub needs more support and training or are we just depending on principles? To so principles, well, and since they're kind of the boots on the ground, seeing those folks every day, trust me, when, when we have some issues or things that aren't working out that we need to provide support, they'll let me know. And then uh, Maria, who does a great job of kind of stepping in and, and providing additional support from the district level. So, but yeah, I mean, we've got a very good open line of communication with the principals. I mean, I've even actually heard from grade level teachers when there's been concerns at different schools with, with a sub that they've let me know that we've gone in and tried to, you know, do whatever we can to help support that person. And last question. Okay. Okay. How is the district handling concerns from parents about their child not having access to a certified teacher, especially in the core area? I've had some parents at the high school level say that their child has not yet had access to a certified teacher, maybe a language or a math, throughout their career that far. What options do they have or how can we connect them with you or what are we doing for those specific? So they're more than happy to come speak with me and I, and I will visit with them. Okay. Um, but what I'll do too is I'll refer them oh, I, and I'll go with them. I mean, I'll be a part of the process, but with our academic services, department because they're the ones that come up with different ideas i know at the high school um they've utilized uh brian help me what's the math program computer not is it apex where the the math teacher is math online oh, no. proximity proximity learning <clears throat> so we are utilizing different avenues there I just, and I apologize, I couldn't think of the word or the company, but we are trying to, you know, utilize that too. And I know that's one thing that got at high school is really, you know, utilized over the last couple of years when they've had, you know, math vacancies. Thank you. Oh, and this may not be my place, but I do need to ask if you guys would visit as a group with our policy committee, um, Ms. Kirk's on it, but we need a new person that would like to serve on that. But I mean, again, I just wanted to make sure that you guys, and then just let me know. Thank you. Good job. That is something we did need to do today. Well, we can't do it today, but we'll do it next right. time. Right. Yeah. Okay. We'll make sure that's on there next time. Um. And then um, you were provided the general ledger report. Um, which is basically yes, kind of yes, goes I along am. with um, all of your list of the 300 pages of checks that were written in the month. Is that about right, Chad? 300 pages. Um, but it kind of it's a summation of that, so you can by fund can tell how the money's f flew away sometimes, but flow. Um, through each of the different funds and uh, so just wanted to make you aware of that the that's that's all I have okay the, do you guys have any questions about the general ledger report I know that it's a it's a big report it is. It's this one um, and and I know that Chad can answer yeah. questions I also know that Chad will pick up your phone call and answer questions as well so you don't have to ask them here, but if you have one here, go ahead and ask. It's just Chad really knows how to talk. <laughs> I love you, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gettys. No, absolutely. Yeah. If, if you guys ever have a question, uh, please feel free to call me at any time, uh, and, and I'll go through that. Um, but, yeah, if you see something that sticks out here uh, with you tonight, we, we, there, I've never been afraid to answer a question. If I don't know it, I'll just tell you, I don't know, and I'll find out. Do we have any questions? The meetings for the budget, when do those start in March? So, typic yeah. so typically, uh, we'll start those off in about February or March. Uh, first thing we're concerned with, of course, is the legislative session. Um, so every year, uh, that legislative session uh, signs into law the appropriation that school districts will get. So that's kind of our starting point. Um, now in a 60 day session, we'll run parallel um, and we'll kind of monitor as we go. But yeah, we're, we're looking at about late February, early March. Yes, ma'am. And that's another committee that two board members sit on. So. Yeah. 
Absolutely, we'll need two board members for that one to for for you guys to think about and who would like to be on that. Mr. Edwards, weren't you already on that committee? No, I was on the audit. Oh, audit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll make sure we can you mark that. Make sure we have those things mm -hmm. on the next. Thank you. That's all my reports. All right, um, guys. Uh, I know you all got your packets of applications. Um, we would like more time to look over these. I know it was on the on the board, like in a re like the report to, to kind of pick these tonight. Um, we would like to try and pick them if possible on Friday, so that gives us more time to go through the applications. If that's okay with everybody up here, I mean it's not a vote, but but just so you guys know, we'll go over that Friday at the board retreat. Is that cool for everybody? Yes, please. Okay. Um, uh oh. I'm missing other things on mine. I know that we had. Uh, uh, Mona wanted to say some things, well, so. I think, got, yeah, hope them. I missed it. Hope on there. All right, well, we'll get there. Doesn't okay. It doesn't matter, but okay. hope, go ahead. Okay. So I did have some questions related to the university high school enrollment. Um, it's my understanding that that school serves some of our most at risk population. So I wanted to make sure that I understood the changes to enrollment just so I have a better understanding because I did have some parents reach out to me with concerns as well. So I was just hoping to clarify some of that information. So Dr. McElroy, in case you're able to answer any of these or otherwise we can see who we need to talk to for these. And, but does University High School use the open enrollment policy to guide their enrollment procedures? Students are not turned away from University High School. Um, the enrollment process has not changed. Um, since I don't know when. Um, so I'm not sure where that information is coming from, but that enro the enrollment processes have not changed. Um, yes, University High School is in a um, high school redesign uh, grant uh, opportunity at the moment, mainly to make sure that a need to pay for a needs assessment to make sure that it is still meeting the need of this community. Um, and so because it, I, I don't know how long ago it was established as an alternative high school or the initial mission of that school, but communities change and we need to make sure that our schools are responsive to those changes. And so the high school redesign is, is merely an opportunity to do a needs assessment to make sure that that university is still meeting the community need. If it is and we need to do something better, then we find that out. If it isn't and something needs to change, we find that out. And so that's what the, the redesign effort is all about. Um, there are parameters. We, we have an obligation to make sure that we, are, we, we don't have a credit factory, that our credits mean something, that they mean something to the kid and they mean something to the community and the future employer. And so, in order for us to maintain our professional integrity as educators and as a school district and you as board members because you signed those diplomas you are certifying that these kids know certain things and so we do that by tracking their credits and the credits that they accrue toward meeting the statutory requirements for graduation the university high school is on a different schedule. It's on a true block schedule, which means that a, a kid takes all of, say, their senior year of English in the first semester. It's more like a college type of course. Then uh, the next semester, they may take all of their math course. So just like in a college course, there's a cutoff time for you to acquire credit in that class because we, the teacher is saying, I professional, as, as a professional educator, I certify that this kid knows, has met all of these standards. And after a certain time, that teacher can't do that anymore. Um, and so that date is not something new. It has always been like that. 
um, there has not been a student turned away from University High School. So I'm not sure where that's coming from. Um, but the, the, there is a difference, and just want to make sure that people understand, there is a difference between University High School and Early College High School. Mm -hmm. Early College High School absolutely has an application mm -hmm. process and an interview process because that is a very special kind of kid that can can manage that type of advanced curriculum that that pace of curriculum university high school on the other hand it's more about do you understand what the expectations are so if there's an interview it's that's what it is do you understand the expectations do you understand where you are academically do you understand because We've got a job to do, and, and many of the students that go to university um, go there because they're significantly behind in acquiring the credits they need to graduate from high school. And let's face it, when a kid has to have 24 credits to graduate, and they're coming in in January of their senior year, and they've got 10, and that happens, there's got to be a pretty serious commitment on that student and on that family's part. Um, to work with the school to, to, to be able to earn the credits because again it is the reputation of this district and of this board and of those teachers to verify that that kid actually knows what we what they're supposed to know and be able to do so um, university does a really really good job of meeting of trying to meet the need of every single kid and they have the flexibility to do that to a point and again without crossing that um, integrity threshold um, but just because a kid's not able to start now doesn't mean that they're not ever able to start it just it may be a delay so that they can get them into the proper sequence well, I do know some students have been turned away, and it may be because mm -hmm. they were not able to commit. You know, there might have been a reason. But can we do better about informing the public about what the criteria is so that they understand when you go to the interview process, you will be willing to commit to these things. Otherwise, you know, you may not be accepted. But just be more open about the criteria related to credits or whatever it is. And I haven't been on their new web page, um, but that would be a good place for that to be posted. <laughs> What is the enrollment cap at University High School? Do we know? I don't know that we necessarily have an enrollment cap. Um, not one that or a I've goal, ever, enrollment goal. I've never been given. I know university, we're, we're, I'm sorry, I know at early college, we're limited because of space mm -hmm. and, and agreement with, with um, the university out there. But, um, you know, University High School, right now, we're limited just simply by staff members. Um, and being able to staff enough um, because it's you know you've got one English teacher you have one math teacher you have one so you know so so that kind of limits as far as class load so you're looking at class load at the secondary level or at the high school level maximum is supposed to be 150 160 kids so could we each year based on the staff kind of talk about what that goal is, what enrollment should be about, so at least the board is aware of what enrollment could be that year based on staff, so that the public is better aware whenever people are applying, well, maybe we're too close to that, or there's plenty of room, come on down. Well, and, and we, and there, there really still, there is, there is always room at University High School. Um, we're not at 150. Okay. Um, one of the things that the high, the comprehensive high schools are doing a better job of is hanging on to those kids and working with kids rather than, than saying, hey, you're too far behind, you're just gonna have to go to university. Um, and, and that is the tendency for all districts. I'm just gonna tell you as a former alternative high school principal, I know that was the, the tendency of my district at that time. That's the tendency. But, but what the comprehensive high schools here in town have committed to do is we're going to hang on to our kids. We're responsible for them, and we want them to be our graduates. And and that then, university is really for those specialized situations where, you know, there's childcare issues or there's, you know, this kid is the breadwinner for the family, and we need some special circumstances. You're meeting 
really specific individualized needs that, it, that maybe one of our bigger high schools aren't able to accommodate. Um, but it's also for those kids who absolutely want to go out there to get an amazing education from some amazing teachers in a smaller setting. And there are those kids in high school that really don't care if they have a prom or really don't care if there's a football team. And so that, that's just fluff mm -hmm. to them that's unnecessary. So it's a really great niche school for those kids who just want to go out there and take care of business and get it done. And so um, I, I, don't, I want people to know about that too. Right. It's not just if you're behind or not just if you're in trouble. It's, it's a great school for kids as a great valuable option in this, in the, in the, for the town. So. And my last question is really for the board. I want to see if the board is interested in collecting data on this. My concern is that if a student applies to University High School and they're not accepted, are they dropping out of school? Are they going back to Rosal High or Goddard? So I wanted to see if we could look at last year's data specifically for students who, and it sounds like it's not going to be many, but students who were not accepted to University High School are they still current students or did we lose them in that process? Because I want to make sure we're not losing students. Is there an opportunity to check with the principal? Would the principal have that data? Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. That might be, we can track okay. that through the principal. Um, and I have a question piggyback off of Hopes. Do we know what the current enrollment at UHS is? I, I don't have it off the top of my head, no. Does anybody? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Getty, so is this data that the board would like to see? Well, I mean, what we can do is we can, if you would request in writing for the next board meeting to have that okay. data, we can do, we can get that to you. Okay. I'm sure. Well, not we, not me, but but yeah, we can make sure that's. Well, if that's it's something that that the board would like to have, mm -hmm. we can get it to you before then. Okay. Maybe yes. just a presentation, um, maybe at our board retreat or our next board retreat. Not next this one? Yeah, not this one. This one's full. This one's yeah. pretty full. Okay, at our next one. Then we could do the next one or the next board meeting, or we could just have a written report before. What do you want, guys? I mean, we can send you the information by email. Sounds yeah. good. Just as easily. That sounds good. Let's and just it may be plenty, or we may have questions. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. I have a couple of questions. Can you send me that? For doctor. Question? Yeah. About university? Yes, right? about university. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that in the community we keep hearing students coming to us that they have been refused entrance. Uh, my question is also, when was this uh, application uh, implemented for entry to the, as a student to go to the university high? And is it in Spanish for the students? Did the board approve this application? All I know, all I've been told about that is that none of those processes have been changed in several years. Okay. Several years. Okay. So you're saying that no students have been refused? And so you haven't had Not any to hearings? My knowledge. No. Any hearings whatsoever? No. Any appeals of any students at all? No students okay. have been refused, to my so, knowledge. So would you be able to tell me how many teachers left at the semester of 2017, 18, all the way to now, till December 2019? At some point? From 2017? 2017, 2018. From, from UHS? Yes. How many teachers mm -hmm. have left UHS? Mm -hmm. And you could do it another in another time. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, do you know if uh, there were exit interviews conducted from these teachers? Probably not. Okay. So there's no data on that? Not, probably not. And do you have a record of how many students have left at the, at the end of the year, the 2017 all the way to, to now, to last semester of students? Yeah. Anywhere? The, no data? The, the school would have that information. Okay. Would I be able to see that at some point? <coughs> okay. request that data. Are you requesting, requesting the data? Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, so you want to include that in the email? Whoever, yeah. From the school? Mm-hmm. So also, do you know how many long-term subs you've had as of last semester? 
at, at UHS? Yeah, USA. Yes. At, US at University, University High. Okay. Yes. All this the last semester? Mm -hmm. Just one. Okay. All right. And um, I think that in order to solve some of the, the dropout crisis, uh, I think we must first address a widespread misunderstanding that these students are not giving up on their education. I think they're, a lot of them are just being pushed out. So we need to address that concern in order to meet the, the New Mexico Hispanic Act uh, of 2010. We also need to address the Bilingual Multicultural Education Act of 2004, and definitely need to meet the uh, Yahtzee Martinez. I don't think we're in compliance whatsoever with the Yahtzee. So we need to really work on that to be in compliance. So. Okay. And I also had another question, if you're able to answer it. Uh, how much time is the, does the principal that is assigned to that school has spent? How much time does she, or? We, we can't talk about okay. that. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. That's a. That's something private. Okay. Yeah. That's another question. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Uh, uh, excuse me. Can I? About UHS? Yes. Sure. You know, <clears throat> the the enrollment at University High School, and I've kept up with the the enrollment at University High School being, at, that I'm at the college. The numbers didn't just start going down this year, the year before. It goes back probably about six or seven years ago. And I know for a fact, because that's where my offices were located, that's where I started at at University High School with the Head Start program. The numbers have, all, have been going down for the last couple of years, and that's been one of my biggest questions that I didn't ask, because it, it never came up. But the numbers have, all, have, have been dropping tremendously. I don't know whether it was under this, I know it, it started before, this administration took over. I can go back probably two or three superintendents because I've kept up with that. And you know, I was, my offices were located out there when we were graduating 105, 110 kids, 115 kids. And when I, when I first got on the board, that was one of the questions that I should have asked, but I didn't ask. Uh, and this is the first time it's been brought up, but you know, we're graduating 30 kids, 40 kids when in the past we were graduating a little over 100, 100 115, a, a small graduation was 70 kids, 80 kids. And we have a lot of the staff that were, that were teachers out at University High School when they first started, because they started, this, the program actually started here, Nouveau Comenso. So it did start here, and there have been a lot of kids that have needed that. I know a lot of those kids, that, that school actually has saved a lot of lives. Mm -hmm. I was good friends with a guy by the name of Bruce Ritter. And he was a pretty, he was a good shaker and baker here in Roswell. And one of the things that he always told me was when it came down to scholarships and his group giving scholarships, those kids were far <laughs> above the kids at Roswell and Goddard. And so when, when we talk about university high school, We've got to get back what we had. And uh, one of the things is, and I've heard this from people in the, from Roswell and Goddard, if, we can, if, they, if, those, if we're holding on to those kids and they don't want to be at Roswell or Goddard, either we're going to lose them, which they're going to drop out. The school was created as an alternative school so they could go back, go to that place, recoup their credits, and become productive citizens. And I don't think that diplomas have changed from, I believe it was 1990 to 2020. A diploma is still a diploma. Diploma, And I know what those kids went through to get, get those diplomas. Uh, I've been told that a lot of kids were, were losing them because Goddard and Roswell are holding on to them. And they're dropping out. And it's, effect, it's also affecting Goddard and Roswell's graduation rates, if I'm not mistaken. You know, I'd rather see a kid graduate from university high school than not graduate at all. And I'm just talking personally for myself. We need to really look at what has happened with those numbers. If we're growing, university should be growing. Mm -hmm. If we're losing, university should be losing. But, you know, it bugs me that 
we have 136 kids in four in four grade levels. You know, if you do the math, what does that come out to? Uh, so I think we do need to really take a look at it. And who's involved in this this uh, this reshaping of the University High School? The, it's the high school, re it, and it's a it's a planning year, and so this is the year for for the needs assessment. Right. And so the needs assessment is actually the the hope is that um, it will be it will involve focus groups of not just kids at university, but kids at Roswell High, kids at Goddard, to see you know what. What, what do y'all need? I mean, what, what, what's the need? It would also involve community, parents, teachers, um, a very comprehensive needs assessment. So it's not just, just the kids that are currently being served, but if, is there something else that needs to be provided to kids that would be appealing to them um, that might compel them what to, to choose university? But we don't know that because we haven't been asking, and so mm -hmm. that's that's what the and, and so that's all this is all about this year, um, and then based on the results of that needs assessment, then it will determine whether or not we pursue additional funding to do whatever to implement whatever is found from the needs assessment. Dr. McElroy, when is that needs assessment's due date? Do we have a date that it needs to no. be completed? No. They're, they're just, they, they're working through, it's called a high school redesign network. Um, I know they had a, a Zoom conference today. I have not been able to, to visit with anybody to see what the result of that was or what the information was in that meeting today. Um, but, it's, but, but it's all about how to structure um, to get the, the broad scope of data that we need, the information we need from you know all the different factions around mm -hmm, town mm -hmm. to inform whether or not the way the current structure, what's currently structured, is it meeting the need? Is it meeting all of the need? Because I mean, it may be meeting some, but but we may be not meeting all. And so, okay. what are we missing? Okay. So no, I, but I don't have any deadlines. Okay. <coughs> Thanks. Would it be reasonable for us to ask that we see something maybe in May, some of the data that might be collected, just so that we have a date that we are looking forward to? Let me, let me double check on that, um, and I can certainly provide you with that information. Perfect. Is that it for UHS? Yes. All right, Mona, you have the floor. Okay, mine is welcome back. So we're starting a new decade, 2020, and I can't tell you the number, yeah, I still write checks. Number of checks I've written today that had 2019, that I had to go back and initial and cross out and write 2020. So I just want to say welcome back, everyone. Let's take a deep breath. The second semester is always the trying one. We've got testing right around the corner. Uh, unfortunately, that's when, right after testing, we start seeing more behaviors. God, I hate that word. So, just hang in there, out there in viewing land, welcome. It's great seeing all the people and sitting in the audience, welcoming our new board members. So thank you all for being here, and let's make 2020 a great year. Welcome back. Thank you. Bye. All right. Do I have to read this A letter? Do I have to read this? The what? This big A. Do I have to read that red? Uh, yes. I knew it. Okay. I knew I was going to have to read that. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Education of Roswell Independent School District will meet an executive session pursuant to 10-15-I NMSA, I'm not going to go through all that, pending litigations and section regarding limited personnel matters. Uh, may I have a motion to go into executive session regarding pending litigations and the superintendent's contract? So moved. So moved. Uh, I second. Okay, I have a motion made by Ms. Kirk, a second made by Ms. Sanchez. 
Uh, may I have a roll call, please? Uh, yes. 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 May I have a motion to return to open session? So moved. I have a motion made by Ms. Morales. May I have a second? Second. Se second made by Mr. Edwards. May I have a roll call, please? Oh, sorry, sorry, Julie. I'm so Who was that? How was the motion made by? Uh, Ms. Morales. Second. Mr. Edwards. Yes. Mother yes. James Edwards? Yes. Paul Morales? Yes. Bill Yes. Okay. I move that the Roswell Independent School District Board accept the resignation of Superintendent Ann Lynn McEnroy, consistent with the terms of the agreement executed this evening by the board and Dr. McEnroy. And I second. A motion made by Ms. Sanchez and a second made by Ms. Kirk. Uh, could, roll call. could we have a roll call, please? Alan Getty? Yes. Mona Kirk? Yes. James Edwards? Yes. Hope Morales? Yes. Bill Sanchez? Yes. I move that the board appoint Mr. Mike Gottlieb as the acting superintendent for the term of January 15th. 2020 through June 30th of 2020. I second that motion. I have a motion made by Mr. Edwards and a second made by Ms. Kirk. We forgot the discussion. Oh, <laughs> is there any discussion? Roll, Roll call. call, please. Callan Getty? Yes. Mona Kirk? Yes. James Edwards? Yes. Pope Morales? Yes. Bill DeSantis? Yes. Okay. Uh, may I have a motion to, this is the end of the uh, agenda. Before we exit, I did hand out the priorities sheet and I wanna remind, I'm sorry. I would rather not, we talked about this in the executive session, I wanna end this. Can yeah. we do that? Okay, yeah. and Thanks. then if we don't Th mind this, staying for a second, so this, I can, okay. This is the end of the agenda, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. I have a motion second. Made second. by Mr. Edwards, a second made by Ms. Sanchez. Roll call please. Sorry, Julie. <laughs> Alan Getty? Yes. Mona Kirk? Yes. James Edwards? Yes. Pope Morales? Yes. Bill DeSantis? Yes.